Send a freaking letter to the Queen. Send her a freaking check. Send a freaking check to the United States of America. Go ahead. Send a check to Canada. Canada Revenue Agency. There you go. Send a check. So what? They, how could they cash it? So I'd like to have the endorsement on the back of the United States of America. I'd like the endorsement on the back of Queen. I'd like the endorsement on the back of CRA. Not Bob, not Joe, not Betty. I want to make sure uh, the Queen is getting it. I don't want nobody else a third-party interloper. No, 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 no. That ain't going to work. If they say I owe the debt, they're the ones I pay, and them alone. Just like if somebody came to me right now and said, hey, call, uh, you owe Bali uh, 500 quid. Oh, really? Says who? Well, says Bali. Mm, really? What? We'll see this piece of paper. Says Bali versus you, 500 quid. Bali got a judgment. Mm, really? Lovely. The only problem with that is I ain't giving you a effing dime. I'll give it to Bali. And it better have Bali's endorsement on the back. And I know what his effing signature looks like. So don't be effing with me. So if you want to collect for him, that's lovely. Here it is. Now, if I see any other effing signature on the back of that thing, I'm going to nail that bastard. <laughs> but here's the check. You know, have at it. Simple. This is so scary. Hey, Carl, I'm going to uh, probably cut off in the next five, ten minutes, but there was a caller who just rang up a few moments let's ago. Do, let's hang up, man. Let's it's hang up. No, dude. dude, let's hang up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It, it, what, somebody's got their hand up for real. Uh, he did have Northwest New York. It was yeah, uh, to do with bank accounts and national insurance. Uh, sorry, Social Security, as you call it, yeah. No, no, it's, it was just, I was saying before, uh, while you're away, Carl, uh, a couple of the guys here, and, and me included, we've uh, gone through the process of uh, trying to remove Social Security numbers from our bank accounts, and uh, a couple of the guys have had success, and, and uh, I'm still uh, you know, fighting with mine, going through the process of trying to get mine removed. It's been a fun little process. I, I've had a blast trying to do it, just with yeah, the whole thing. You, but uh, can, you me, can you tell me what the benefit is? What the benefit of having a social security number on a bank account is? No, can you, can you, no, can you, can you, no, can you tell me what the benefit is from removing it? Can you just tell me why it's beneficial? So, I mean, if you're Joe Smith and there's 10 million Joe Smiths, and the only way they could possibly ID you through their system is through a social security number, can you tell me why it's a benefit to be one of the 10 million Joe Smiths who refuse to use social security numbers? Can you tell me what's the benefit? Well, there's, there's plenty of different ways that I could identify myself because not uh, no, I, you know, no, eight no, million no, Joe Smith or sir, 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 I just say you can identify okay. yourself. I say that. Okay. I said the, the name Smith is the most prolific name in the United States. Okay, let's let's agree mm -hmm. to that. Okay, and Joe is the biggest name, the first name. Okay, so say there's 10 million Joe Smiths in the United States. Okay, and nobody wants to use a Social Security number. How is the banks going to be able to? You know, just, just figure out which Joe Smith is asking for what out of what account to make sure oh, they got the real to make sure oh, they got the right Joe Smith. Various things. You got a photo ID if you want to give them a pic, uh, photo identification of yourself, a picture of yourself, what your signature, the, what is, address. What is, photo, what is the photo ID? Okay, look, if I'm Joe Smith and you're Joe Smith, and I walk into the bank and said, I'm Joe Smith, here's my photo ID. My mama took it and she put my footprint on it when I was born. Here's my photo ID. I want access to Joe Smith's bank account. What's the number? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. How did you know that? Well, you know, I just know that. Well, how do we know you're the real Joe Smith that belongs to one, two, three, four, five? Well, look, here's a picture of my footprint that my mommy put on my uh, piece of paper when I was born. That's me. And I got three affidavits from my mom, my, a priest, and my uncle. That's on me. Trust me. Give me the money out of Joe Smith's account. I'm just asking, what's the benefit of not having a number on the bank account? Oh, so it's so it's not exposed to the public. Okay, then why are you putting so, your money so, into why, second, why are you putting your money into a public institution then? Uh, because uh, I feel it's probably I, because I I feel it's probably a little bit safe, safer than stuffing it in my mattress. Because I, okay. I feel that there's a, there's a benefit sometime okay. of uh, of using a debit card to to make a purchase at the grocery store. Okay, so then why don't you just buy cards that are prepaid cards? Why don't you just go to Walmart and buy a $500 prepaid card? And we're not running that's out. An spend a yeah, yeah, that's an option, too. That's it. But what's the purpose of not having... Uh, see, what's the benefit, though, of not having a Social Security number? On the benefit. 
the benefit of not having one, just uh, like I said, it, it's not ex it's not branding your uh, account as uh, as a public account. So that you know, if, if IRS wanted to uh, jump in and snag it from there, just based off the social security number, they could just go in and do that. But we we we've gone through that before, and you've explained it many many times that if anybody's going to take your property, if anybody's going to try and seize your bank account. And, and have a notice of lien thrown in front of them, and they're just going to act under fear and, and seize your funds uh, in, in, the, in the account, we all know we can hold that uh, man or that woman liable. But uh, yeah. Right, but so what I'm talking about is just trying to uh, just uh, eliminate probably one step of the process before it gets to that and not expose it publicly so that uh, it can be a, a deterrent. What I'm saying, okay, what I'm saying, I can't understand how people can not m manage their money better than that. Like I said, it's not just you. Two people I'm talking to in federal prison during the week, one guy got, I think it was uh, Gus probably, I, I remember reading the, the, the federal um, criminal complaint against the man, and I'm trying to remember. It was either 260 or $450,000 they seized in the man's PayPal account. Uh -huh. Now, who in their right mind, PayPal is like eBay. Who in their right mind would put like a quarter of a million or half a million dollars in eBay's trust and care? It's insane. Are you talking about what? PayPal or are you talking about eBay? He put it in PayPal and eBay's the same company. Okay. You didn't know well, that. well, well, it's, it's, it's got to be linked. It's, it has to be linked back to some type of uh, credit card or bank account. What I'm saying, it's the same company. eBay and PayPal are the same. They're going to split sometime this spring. In the second quarter, okay. they're going to split. Okay? But what I'm saying is who in their right mind would give eBay a half a million dollars and hopefully that nobody's going to touch it or take it or wonder why you gave eBay a half a million dollars to hold? Yeah. So obviously, the feds took, it took them two seconds to tell eBay, PayPal, to um, seize the funds. And then the guy's like, hey, why did you take all my money out of the PayPal account? Dude, you gave it to eBay. Are you out of your effing mind? Yeah, you are, because now you're sending federal jail. You know, like, well, what are you people thinking? It's like, I keep the bare minimum in my bank account, so like you said, I could travel the world, which I do, and if I need to buy an airline ticket back home, which sometimes I do, I have the funds available, but no great amount that if they did take it, I was like, eh, oh, well, no big deal. So like you said, well, I don't feel safe with it in my under my mattress. I'm, okay, I guess you live in a really bad neighborhood where people steal mattresses. Or I'm afraid of my house. Uh, uh, that's, what, that's, why you, that's, why you put it, that's why you put it in a cast iron box. Well, that's why you put it in a steel insulated box that they sell it at Walmart for $30. Yeah, they sell it's not it. It's not that hard for freight for like $30. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's one way of doing it, it's, and and we have that option. We definitely have that option if we want to but do that. And what the big thrill is to not be able to walk in and say, hallelujah, I finally achieved this miracle of miracles. I don't have a Social Security number on my bank account. What is the great benefit, I'm saying? So you could still think you could put a million dollars in your bank account and it's safe and secure, and there's no way in the world anybody's going to have the opportunity to seize it? Well, wouldn't did they have a hard time trying to see it? Did, did you ask? <laughs> did you ask the bank? Did you ask them a simple question? What's the benefit of me having one, or what's the benefit of me not having one? Did you just ask somebody who does, you know, banking for a living, and just say, "Hey, if I put a million dollars in a bank, you know, uh, how safe is it without a social security number?" They say, um, uh, "It's just as safe as somebody puts in a hundred thousand because really insure you to a hundred thousand." We don't insure anybody. The federal government doesn't insure any deposits past 100000 You'd have to take out private insurance. We wouldn't guarantee its safety. So what I'm saying oh. is I see you guys yeah. putting in such a concerted, hard effort, and I wish you'd, you'd spend your energy doing something maybe a little bit more uh, you know, practical than saying, well, I was able to accomplish through 17 years of diligence to not get my Social Security number in my bank account. I said, but what did it accomplish? Well, now it's safe and secure. Well, why don't you just keep $1,000 in there and put the rest in, uh, in some sort of container that's not going to burst into flames when your house goes on fire? Well, that's an option. Well, okay, can you explain to me what was the benefit of all this diligent hard work? What, what was the purpose, I'm saying? What, what do you think you're going to accomplish or achieve? What's the next goal? Okay, now you accomplish this. What's the next goal? What's the next thing you'd like to do? 
So what, after uh, having the uh, number removed from the bank account? Yeah, now you accomplish this, you know, feat. What's the next, you know, grand, you know, you know, what you want to do? What's the next What's the next mission in life? You uh, got this one. But if I, if I would think of one, I would get to it. But, uh, oh, it's cool. yeah, there's, there's, no, there's no more pressing, uh, you know, need. But uh, I've, uh, just myself, I've, I've uh, removed the number from pretty much all uh, aspects of my life here with uh, utility bills, everything like that. And it's just bank accounts, just the last one, that's all. Well, like I said, it, it, you could re- actually read the Social Security Act, and it clearly says in the Social Security Act that if anybody denies you a job because you don't have a Social Security number, you could hold them liable, and you could actually sue them and get awarded compensation for them failing to employ you. So I'm sure somewhere in the in Social Security Act, if somebody refuses to give you a bank account or if somebody refuses to give you a driver's license and somebody refuses to do that, I'm sure somewhere in the Social Security Card, it says this, uh, Social Security Act, it says the same thing. Nobody could force, oh, yeah. you know, yeah, right. But it's already yeah, it established. But I'm saying it's already established. But what I'm saying is I don't really understand. I mean, when people ask me my social care number, it's 126426, uh, 126624286. What's the big deal? Mm-hmm. I don't care. It's not my number. So go ahead and take that number and go fuck with it. And you know what? You're going to get the feds knocking on your door. You're not going to get me knocking on your door. You're going to get the United States government or the feds knocking on your door. It's their effing number. It's not your number anyway. So what the hell does right. it matter? Look, your social security number. I, I, I don't have one, but somebody issued one, and this is the one I use for convenience and transactions through the commercial land. This is what you know they give me, so I'm going to use it as a benefit. This is the key they give me to unlock the door to make it quick and smooth and easy transitions. You know, I'm not going to thwart that. I'm going to say, hey, you know what? That's a great benefit. I can't, what, like I said, I'm not stupid enough to put more than a certain amount of money in the bank to begin with. You know? Al? Yeah. Yeah, this is John. I just wanted to tell you that uh, right on the back of the Social Security card, it says right there in in clear language, this card belongs to the Social Security Administration and you must return it upon demand. Yeah, Yeah. it's not mine. Yeah, so I couldn't care less. It's just a key. It's just like like if they give me a key, you know, it's like the key to go through the commercial door a little bit quicker and easier. Okay. You know, I'm going to kind of keep and go on my life. It's just the same thing somebody asked about a passport. And like this this, uh, this guy on Angela's show last week, me and Angela were talking about this guy, and even Angela says, you know, this is crazy. You know, the, why is she or he blocking his ability to access the commercial world? And obviously, if he's got a cell phone, he's using somebody else's. Obviously, if he's got an apartment, he had to get it through somebody else's name. Obviously, if he's driving a car, it's not his, or he'd be in jail every five seconds. And why have such a hassle when you go to the border crossing and just say, hey, passport, there you go. Welcome home. Thank you. Have a nice day. Goodbye. And walk in. What's the big deal? I don't get it. I mean, I fight for certain things because, like I said, you know, like that Alabama couple last week on a show, they said, you know, thank you, Carl. Oh, it was a Sunday show I did, so you guys didn't hear them. If you want to listen to the Alabama couple, you know, saying, yay, we got our kid back. We we did your little silly uh two or three sentence thing and they laughed at us at first and then the judge gave it back and said we're sorry that we took your kid you know so uh, that was a Sunday show I did like 10 well 13 days ago now but anyway I try to accomplish things like that you know to me I I spend more time trying to get you know people back their their property that's what I do you know if somebody takes your property uh, I'm like you want to get it back here. Yeah, this is how we do it. I don't care if it's your property, it's your car. I don't care if it's a unicorn. I don't care if it's a child. I don't give a damn if it's yours. If the government is there and is holding it for you. Good. If they're securing and protecting it. Good. Now go claim it. What? They're, go claim it. Nobody else is going to claim it. Well, the United States government. No, they can't make a claim. They can't swear and put their hand on a stack of Bibles and swear that no, that it's, it's a. They don't have hands. It's 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 a, it's a, it's a fictional entity. Only man can make a claim. The government only exists to secure and protect the property of man. Go make the claim. Go get your property back. It's just sitting there. Go get it. Well, they took it 15 years ago. Go get it. Some lady asked me that the other day. The kid would put them in foster care, you know, then adopt it out. Go get it. You like that easy? Go get it. It's your property. You created it. You had the only vested interest in it. Nobody else put anything in it. Well, those the adopted parents will say, well, you know, we put a uh, three years of uh, our hard labor into this kid. Good. Tell me the bill, and I'll and I'll give you back the you know how much did you put into it? 
three hundred thousand. Okay, give me the pill. Oh, by the way, all I got is a uh, uh, at the end of the month is a uh, ten dollars and seventeen cents. So it's going to take quite a while to tender the debt, but to the tails to settle the debt. But there you go. Here's a start. Here's ten dollars seventeen cents. I'm here here to collect my property. Thank you. Then the thing, the wisdom of Solomon to figure that out. I don't have to cut the baby in half. It's my property. I'm taking it. I created that little, you know, piece of bundle of joy. It's mine. Did you create it? No. Then back the F off. I'm the creator. Back off. It's simple. There's no rocket science here. But is there, is there and like I said, um, is there anybody else who's in Bali unmuted that wants to say anything before, like me and Bali called in the night? Are you still there, Bali? I don't know if you're still there or not. Because yeah, I've been gone. Yeah, because like I said, because I got to hang up and then I got to dial back in. And because I'll, you know, un unlock the board real quick and just let anybody ask. If anybody wants to ask something, dude, real quick, I got to hang up, call back up and use my own uh, access code because Bali uses my access code. So, yeah, I'll I'll jump off, but yeah, that I just wanted to get some input. You know, I appreciate the uh, the chat. Yeah, uh, I just, yeah, I you, I know a couple yeah. of people. It's it's come before, and I've never heard it uh, discussed on the show before. So I just kind of well, wanted to pick your brain and get I mean, your your take. I, I on mean, it, that's all. I'm saying it. I'm, I'm, I got no problem with people, you know, spending their time and energy and effort on something. But I mean, I hope you come back in, you know, like a week or two and say, man, you know what? I got a great mission. I said, what's your mission now? And it's like now we're going to make sure that. Uh, you know, all judges allow uh, video recordings of every court session. Oh, great, good. How you when you when you succeed at that, let us know. Or, or any time a court clerk interferes with our right to access the court, uh, you know, we're going to hold a claim against a woman who's uh, interfering with our right to access a public building because she works for us. So see what I'm saying? I'm just saying, I just wish there was more to the benefit side of not having a social security number in your bank account. I just wish it was like, oh, my God, you finally did it. You cracked the code. You, you, you busted them wide open. Now we're all safe. You see what I'm saying? I'm not putting down your achievement. I'm just saying, you know, mm -hmm. you come up with a really good one. Like, you know, we learned now how to, like Paul Gus, you know, he wants to access these courts like he got no idea. And he's saying it's so hard for him to be uh, congeal, uh, you know, Mr. Congeal, you know, we're trying to, make him as sweet as pie, but it's very frustrating when he's running into a brick wall. Uh, are you there, Gus? Mm -hmm. Hey, Gus, are you there? Yeah, I had to unmute. Yeah, yeah go ahead and explain this to the guy a little bit, because i got to hang up for a second and log back in under my own uh, password. All right. Uh, yeah. Assessing the courts, yeah, it's, it's, there's um, three different cases that I'm personally working on, and then I'm, you know, I'm helping a bunch of other people with their stuff. Now, John Paul's doing the same thing with his case. Uh, he's got several cases going on. But uh, you, you try when you're trying to bring your court into their courthouse, and I've, I've done one straight up common law right from the beginning, another one a conversion, and uh, just, just got a decision on a statutory case uh, from last month. That went pretty well. And uh, but that was uh, that remained in statutes, and uh, there's one that we uh, converted from uh, five years in the statutory court into a common law venue, and they are throwing a fit. I mean, these people are just upset, ignoring the paperwork, and basically they're trespassing over and over on the case. And uh, on Thursday this week, uh, two of the different courts issued. Uh, a, uh, an order, and one of them is the one that's 100% common law, and the other one is the one that was converted over. And in both cases, the judges issued an order which clearly shows that they've trespassed. And now it's not just our paperwork that shows that the stuff was was in there. That you know, we we were looking for a way to make a claim, looking for the risk management, uh, which is the uh, claims adjuster for the state. Uh, or uh, now, who who is it the, that you go to to make a claim? Do you go to the judiciary? Where do you go make a claim for a trespass on a case? And uh, instead of suing the clerk, instead of suing a judge or you know starting a lawsuit, I want to talk to a claims adjuster. No different than when I get into a car accident. Uh, 
you know, back on August 20th, somebody ran into me, and I got her, um, you know, in a car accident, and I got her uh, insurance information, policy number. I called the insurance company. They took care of it. It was all done. You know, that was a trespass on my vehicle. And so this is no different. I don't, I don't want to go suing anybody. I just want to make a claim. I want the claims adjuster to look at the paperwork and decide how much, you know, what the value is and pay the claim. That's it. And like John Fall's doing, in which, you know, I've been hesitating to do it, I haven't put in a fee schedule yet. And, you know, John and I have had this discussion, and I don't disagree with putting a fee schedule in for trespass. I'm just uh, I'm avoiding putting too much in there, and, uh, you know, my life's not on the line. John's got a real serious case going on. I don't. And the cases that I am working on is very serious for the people I'm working with, but yet uh, I didn't want to go that far just yet. I wanted to just wait one more week, one more week, and see if we can get them to really put both feet into the pie so that we can make that claim. And I think we got that this week on Thursday, and so uh, now we're looking for the claims adjuster for the uh, trespass. You know, who's... Who holds your bond? Who has the insurance on this on this case, on, on this clerk's office? Your oath of office has a, a bond and a policy number. I need to know what it is so I can make a claim. And they're not giving up that information. We've got two of those letters into the courts. So, you know, it is frustrating. It's very difficult to, uh, to, to get them to do their job. I mean, it's really, there's nothing complicated about it. We've even... In one of the courts, the one that's 100%, you know, common law, the uh, the clerk said that she was uncomfortable in allowing the Smith court into her courthouse, and uh, sent it off to the building manager, which in this case is not the chief justice, and the building ma manager uh, wasn't sure what to do with it, so she passed it on to the chief judge, who held on to it for two weeks, and then finally this past week uh, issued a an order saying that uh, the judge is calling the, the the lady moving the case a plaintiff, and she's calling the notices and all the paperwork in the case motions. So she's she's you know there's proof positive on the record that she's trespassed on the case, not only trespassed but converted the case over to something that it's not. You know, this case is clearly, there's lots of notices in the case. This is a common law case, so there's a notice of common law. There's a notice of the character and nature of the man that, you know, the person that's in the court is a man. Uh, the, the, the nature is a man. The character is that of a prosecutor, not that is of a plaintiff. So all that kind of language is in there as notices already. So there's no ambiguity whatsoever that this is a common law case. And for this judge to go ahead and say, this is a plaintiff and these are motions when, in fact, it's a, you know, it's a lady making a claim, a woman making a claim, and uh, she's putting notices in. Not, uh, th there's, there's, there is no motions before the court for the judge to make any decisions on. And there's other language in there that specifically says that this case is to be heard by the, uh, by the jury and not to be, not to be decided by a judge. You know, the judge has no no decision-making capacity whatsoever in this case. They are there, the, the judge, magistrate, whoever it's going to be, has nothing to do but to witness the case and find uh, that the facts are in support of the claim and to witness that uh, the order that we gave them, we already put the order into the case that we expect the judge to sign. You know, we require the judge to sign if the facts are presented and he believes that the claim is true, that he's to witness that, uh, at, you know, along with the jury and the clerk and to move it on to a sheriff for execution. So the, the order's already into the court. The case is 100% complete. We gave the, uh, the clerk a heads up because we've been building the case for three weeks, putting paperwork in, making sure everything was tight. And then we wrote a letter to the clerk saying, uh, you know, we, we just put in a summons into the case, and the case is ready to move forward. We require two copies to be prepared, two uh, complete copies to be prepared with the summons that's already in the case to be delivered to the sheriff 
for uh, for execution on the parties through process service. And that, that's when they started throwing a fit. You know, you, you can't bring the Smith court into our court, into our courthouse, and we have a problem with this. And they never put that on paper. Uh, those were the, the, the discussions. And so, you know, rather than flip out, I just took my time, uh, took a deep breath, figured out what to write next, and just kept going at it. And finally, uh, they stepped into it. They finally put it on paper that they've trespassed on the case. So now we're looking for the claims adjuster. So uh, that's where we're at. But it is it is frustrating. Hey, Gus, can I can I just uh, ask you a question about that? Yeah, go ahead, John. Okay, so and I'm I'm, I'm just asking. I'm I'm not even sure I'm going in the right direction. But technically, aren't they correct? Like they if they say that you can't put your case in their court. Um, it seems to me that would be a correct statement for them to say, contrast with you can put your case in the public courthouse, their fictional court, whatever that is, the state of Vermont, you know, district court, I don't know what it is, wouldn't they be correct in saying that? Oh, absolutely. And, and uh, they're saying, that, you know, they, they specifically mean the courthouse. We, You know, the conversations that the lady had with them you know, right up front, she had one conversation, and then uh, we we uh, went to courthouse. You know, we, we went to the um, to putting everything in writing. Told her, look, we need everything in writing, and that was the last time they they mentioned anything about that subject. But yes, yeah, she absolutely correct. It's you know, they're talking about their courthouse and not not their court because when you're in their court, you got to follow their rules. And I only I know you know that I'm I'm bringing it up so people who are listening can understand. There's there's only a limited number of ways they try to trick you. When they did that to me in both of my cases, and so I just wrote back to them and say, uh, you know, I'm not trying to put my court into your court. I'm putting my court, my court, I, my cases in my court at the location of the public courthouse known as. You know, and, and I, I explain it to them. They see that, what, I think once they see that you're diffusing their, their silly little childish tricks, um, they, they start to lose ammunition and hope really quick. 